David, we are live. <laughs> we are live. This is happening. Ladies Fantastic. and gentlemen, welcome to Brady's Hunch, the podcast for smart dancers. Today's guest is the amazing, the incredible, the absolutely downright, devilish, devilishly handsome and also extremely polite, David <laughs> Green. Hello, hello. <laughs> da- David Green, whose name, who, who is one of the Blackguard cast members whose name I forgot in the first <laughs> in the first show that we did of of our last show actually well, Blackguard's last still show breathing. Yep. still breathing uh, we got to the end of the show everyone clapped I did a quick little chat to the audience saying thank you for coming and then I introduced the cast one by one and I forgot David's last name <laughs> which is Green yep. so, or so I'm told <laughs> <laughs> what's it well Stella screamed it out in the last that's one, right she, she did like, too she was David like, Green David <laughs> Green I was like oh thank you someone I really don't know why that happened actually it was quite embarrassing for oh, me, that's like weird. for me, because I I tried to. I feel like up until then I spoke really well. Yeah, no, yeah, but like I'm the absolute worst is with names and everything. Like, um, uh, when I was um, introducing Bianca, my amazing girlfriend, to my friends and family for the first time, yeah, it was just like one of those house parties and whatnot, and I was introducing her as B for the entire night, <gasps> right? Because I was so afraid that I would like pronounce it wrong or sure. say something wrong, and I was like. Hi, this is B. Everybody, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like oh, I'd really, because like yeah, that would be better than getting it absolutely wrong, wouldn't it? Oh goodness! Yeah, no, and so everyone was like, B is that? Were they like B, having yeah. guesses at what her full name was? And that's stuff? it. And then she would just chime in and be like, "It's Bianca." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Far out. But yeah, yeah. So that, that was really. Well, that's that's kind of good. Then I did it to you. Then yeah, because if been you doing it to you also struggle my whole life. Like, <laughs> And There's something students, weird about that. My students pick up on it. Like, um, I'll be teaching something, and then oh, I'll be like, "All right, does anyone have any questions?" And three kids put their hands up, and one of them is just like, "Yeah, yeah." It's like, "What's my name, sir?" Oh, I hate that. I hate that. If there are any <laughs> students listening, I think it, it's it's safe. Some dance teachers mm. are great at memorizing your name, yep. and th- sure that they care, yep. and they also have the brains that do that. I know I don't have a brain that does that. I don't do that. <laughs> and just because David and I forget your name doesn't mean we don't care. Mm. I know it's, everything about like I know exactly. We know what how you're trying you move. To learn what your goals are, like yeah. what you, you know, what tricks you're having trouble on, what we need to work on next week. Yeah. But I don't know what your name is. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know more about. I I start to know more about your sense of humor and how you how you need to be taught because mm. that's what I'm really trying to zero in on. But I'm really standing there going, that person's name is Jeanette. Like, I'm never doing that. I'm always going, okay, I have to do a thousand other things to do. And also, exactly. we're, we're adults, we're busy, and, you know, we teach how many? We teach so many kids yeah. in, in a week. It's like when, yeah. it's the same when, um, whenever I'm giving a solo to someone and they, they if they, this never happens to my regular soloists, <laughs> but whenever, when it's early days and they don't remember their routine, mm. I go... Or they like, oh, what was this bit? And they make that mistake like t- one time. Yeah. And then I go, hey, it's not my job to remember the solo. I give it to you. Well, that's and it's, it. it's your solo. Yeah. It's your responsibility now. Deal with it. You know? Yeah. And yeah, you have to be like that sometimes because, yeah, we've got so many other so things shit. to worry about. So yeah. many. And yeah, it's not like, it's not that we don't care. Like, yeah. of course, we want you to have the best performance you can do, but it's like, I, I've got my six performances tomorrow night as well That's that it. I need to rehearse. That's it. I need to remember. And it's just etiquette, really. I think yeah. I think it's like a point to teach students. It's great that we're getting this much out before it even <laughs> really ripped in, but it's such a point to teach students to go, hey, you know, all the jobs that I've done, and I'm willing to bet all the jobs that you've done, mm. working with producers and directors and choreographers and all that stuff, you really don't, you really don't walk into work going, oh, I'm going to ask the choreographer if they remember my name. No, that's like not what you're there for. You know, what you're there to do, course, you have you have yeah. a job to do. Yeah, you, you, yeah. It's just, oh, couldn't yeah. couldn't care less if that's like it. Bonnie Lithgow doesn't remember my name. She'll no. point at me and go, "You, what's your name?" And I'll tell her every time, and no. that will not wound my ego one bit. No, because she works with lots of people, and so do I. Yeah, I only know uh, if we're talking about Bonnie Lithgow. Um. You know, yeah, the only reason I saw, well, one of the biggest reasons I know her name is because she was on TV for so long doing So You Think You Can Dance. So exactly, it's, yeah. it's really an unfair thing for me to go, I remember your name, Bonnie Lithgow. Why don't you remember mine? It's like, it's like 
Cause calm down. On billboards, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like plastered in your face. Yeah. Calm down. I haven't been on TV as much as you have, doll. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all that stuff. That's it. Um, David Green, Hello. mate. Yes. Uh, you men of many talents. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what I've heard. Eh? I don't okay. even know. I'm just guessing. No I'm kidding. Yeah, no. Um, we should meet up. That's what, yeah, we should. We should hang out like yeah. right now. Yeah. All right. Sounds do, good. Do you want to do a podcast? I mean, I'm I'm free at the moment. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, that's good. You must have a very wide open schedule just to just to straight up. Actually, I was, like, I was going through my calendar um, to said I went to do this, and I was like, oh yeah, I've got this day completely free. It's my sister's twenty first today. That's oh. why my day was completely free. So happy, happy birthday, birthday, Lindsay! Happy birthday, Li- Lindsay! Lindsay, yeah. Happy birthday, Lindsay Green. Hopefully, yeah. I remember her name too. <laughs> <laughs> I won't forget that one. Oh um, goodness, I have a feeling this this podcast is going to be very laughy. Yep. There's going to be lots of like burst out laughter that's, moments. That's just the... what happens when you put the two of us together, though. That's it. That's yeah. a very good point. Um, Neil and I have a we have something that we've started to call. I call I call you this way more than I think he originally intended. <laughs> but when we did when we did Fright Night, mm. which is a, a sort of a dance festival that the Blackguard runs, you know, every year from now on, because we did our first one last year and we're doing another one this year. I'll tell you more about that later. Come. And come to it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's great. You get to do a whole bunch of like Halloween themed classes, uh, dance classes with great choreographers. And then we go to Holy Moly and play mini golf in full Halloween kit. Yeah. It's very fun. Um, it was a great day. It was a good day. What, was the, what was the point I was, t- I was talking about? I was trying to make a point. Um, uh, what Neil had Oh, said. yeah. So yeah. Neil said, so we were putting and I, I was in, I was captain of my team and Neil was captain of the team that you were in mm-hmm. and I was scoring really accurately. I was being like a score, like a, a point Nazi. I was, yeah. I was being bad. I was like, like, goes off thin up, no, that's three Yeah, points. I was like, I swear, <laughs> Aaron had like 16 putts at one of the holes and I was like, no, nah, not changing oh. it. Like I was just, and she was like, babe, like, oh my God, I can't believe you. Like all that stuff. <laughs> no, nah, she wasn't that. She was like, no, nah, that's fair. Um, but Neil, I looked, I peered over at Neil's and I was like, because he, he was like skipping a couple of a couple yeah. of people's like tries or whatever was just like, and I went oh, oh you know, are you not being that accurate and I'm like you know you were up to putt at the time and I was like Dave could hack it and he goes he goes no 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 but we don't we don't want to he's like we don't want to what did he say he said we, we don't want to upset our beautiful David <laughs> 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 which when he said it I knew exactly what he meant because you are so you're like so great and so precious like there's oh. you're not actually precious like you're not <laughs> you're not like soft right yeah. um but you just have you're just one of the nicest human beings i think <laughs> i've ever had the pleasure of meeting and working with and there's something in me that if anyone was to try and harm you mm. i would like take a bullet for i would like jump in the in front of a moving car oh. to stop like that from happening or whatever um, but like there is this weird protectionist yeah. thing that goes on and so Neil said our beautiful David and I went I'm calling David that forever now <laughs> and so now now Aaron and I call you all the time we're like oh, our beautiful David said blah 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 so we're like it was, and which is fun because it's like an ownership thing as well yeah. our beautiful David you're like you're like you're like in my bosom I'm like patting you or something I'm like yes yes you're my friend um, it's weird it's weird but it's funny uh, so I, d- I doubt Neil wanted to make a big thing about that but now Erin and I like I told Erin this morning before she left for work I said um, I said oh you know who's coming over today for a podcast and she goes who I go our beautiful David <laughs> oh yes <laughs> she was like and her reaction's great this is why I do it because her reaction was was perfect and she goes she goes oh yay like so excited about that beautiful david like <laughs> it's unreal um oh, i love i love that that's so much better than like my other nickname which was just um david from hornsby <laughs> <laughs> oh get on dave yeah. from hornsby dave from hornsby yeah dave from hornsby um <laughs> hey, so dave from hornsby our beautiful david <laughs> tell us about tell us about your story tell us about the origin story and how you became how you came to be a, a performer, a dancer, and being the man you are and doing what you do? Give us a quick rundown of that. Okay. Um, uh, and, and also maybe, like, tell the audience the things you've done to make yourself sound really impressive. Because <laughs> you are, okay. but if you don't tell them, they might not know. They might not know. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it all started... Um, I... Was born. I was born. Great. Yes, that, that happened. That was a big day. That was a big day. Actually, the doc um, had a really difficult pregnancy... I didn't have a difficult pregnancy. Right. Had a difficult birth. Okay. I wasn't pregnant. Yeah. Um, 
basically cord wrapped around my neck, um, came out not breathing, yep. bad things happened, doctors thought there was blood in my brain, all that stuff. They basically said, um, Dave is not going to make it through the night. Wow. The next day, I was, still here. Then they said, he's never going to walk or talk. No way. That's 100% what they said. They were just like, no. Um, christen him tonight on his first day because <gasps> he's not going to make it. You're kidding. Um, my parents... <clears throat> Uh, my parents said, nah, we've, we're not doing that tonight. We're mm-hmm. not going to give up on him. So right. they right. pushed through that. Um, and yeah, I came out all right on the other side. Um, mm-hmm. And my mum sort of took it as a bit of a challenge. Like, okay, he's going to walk. He's definitely going to walk. So mm-hmm. she got me into um, gymnastics. As soon as I started walking a little bit around the house, I was straight into a gymnastics <laughs> class which was fantastic there's lots of like little videos of me as like this believe it or not i was a lot shorter back then um <laughs> you're, you're still short mate i'm still short, yeah. We're still short. i've had my my growth spurt i came and went <laughs> same it was about an inch yeah, yeah. it was like <laughs> that was it <laughs> um and yeah i just yeah always um because my dad was a massive gymnast yeah um was he really yeah, yeah, Dad, like, I think he did gymnastics for about 20 years. He was, wow. um, from what I understand, he was, like, at the same level of gymnastics as I am with dance right now. Sure, sure. And then somebody put a computer in his lap, mm. and he decided he loves computers and loves programming and all that stuff, and so, yeah, he loves his job, and he's doing that now. But cool. he's always helped with the whole, um, you know, he's got that, he's definitely got that mindset that performers and athletes have that yeah. is taught into me, which is just like, you have to love the pain. Yeah. Something that he's yeah. always taught me. So you have to be like, so willing to put up with it. Right. Yeah. And actually enjoy it. And like it on yeah. some level. I think, I think the love for it comes later. I think, yeah. I think dealing with it, dealing with it for the, the reward mm. is what starts it. Like that's the carrot. Yeah. That's the carrot and the, the, what is it? They, they call it the, the carrot or the stick. Carrot on a stick? It, the carrot. Well, there's the carrot where you oh, yeah. like you have the carrot in front of you, or you have the stick hitting you in the rear. Oh. So like, which you know, yep. the thing that's luring, luring you forward, but you have to deal with the pain of the stick. I yep. think that I'm I'm probably using that wrong as well. I, I do this to a lot of phrases. <laughs> I mix them up and make them work the way I want them to for the conversation I'm having. Yeah. Um, yeah that's all good. <laughs> but yeah, then I think people learn to eventually love the process because of what yeah. they get out of it. Yeah. Like um, once they build that synapse. Yeah, so yeah, I'll go back to that. Um, so yeah, my origin yeah. story, <laughs> which is where this is meant to, my bad. Um, yeah, so I did a lot of sports when I was a kid. Um, there were a lot of sports I wanted to do that I wasn't allowed to because I was too short, like rugby. They just mm. didn't even let me try out. And I was like, yeah, but I, I can run. Um, so I did a lot of like, soccer <laughs> was like, um, or football. It's football. It's he's, football. He's British. Yeah. Because you hit it with your foot, and it's a ball. Anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with it. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, one day I just decided, oh, like we went to this fair, and I watched this, um, this group of boys start doing some hip-hop up on stage, and I, just thought, I just turned to my mum, and I was like, Mummy, can I do that next year? Amazing. And, it was, and yeah, and that's how um, I got into Dance Max, my first first ever studio which I still teach at now oh, really? all these years later I'm oh, still sick. still there teaching and yeah it's just like this little this little group of boys just doing hip hop um, yeah did that for my whole school whole, whole of high school all that then went on to full time at Urban um, where I met Urban Dance Centre Urban Dance Centre yep yeah. um, which was fantastic I was so happy to even get into that right you know, just to be allowed. And um, yeah, I remember my first class with um, Rosa, who was the hip hop teacher. She was, and um, it was only a really small group that year. We were the last year at Urban um, when it got sold and well, all that happened and it just sort of disappeared. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, all that stuff. Let's just all we'll stuff, skip yeah. all that. But um, no, it was a really. Because the people who know that story know that story and the people who don't yeah. probably yeah. are okay with not knowing. Yeah. That's all good. Um, but yeah, no, it was a really good year for me. And yeah, I remember my first hip hop class with Rosa. Mm. Um, she went around the group and said, all right, um, you know, what styles have you done? And I said, oh yeah, I'm hip hop. And 
I really wasn't. <laughs> she f- pointed out that I really wasn't hip hop, but right. you know. Um, but yeah, no. So yeah, got through that year. Um, learned so much about just um, you know how to how to work with people, how to just like, even though I'm completely out of my element, just this is okay. This is what's been asked of me. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm, I know I'm probably going to fail, but just give it 100%. Right. You know. Um, then I did two years at Village Performing Arts, mm-hmm. um, which was great as well. So This yeah. is when it was just Village, yeah? Village on... Oh, Village on Broadway. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so this cool. was when it was in Alexandria. Yes. Yeah. Um, which is now Village Nation. Yes. But just for posterity's sake. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I did two years with them. So for those counting at home, that's three years of full time. Damn, lots of full time. And lots I've, of full-time. I've asked you this question before. Yeah. But what kept you going to do more, like more full time, more courses, more of that stuff? It. What? Well, yeah. Just. I was trying got to pack that. so addicted to the just to the day to day life of it because yes. so many people they. Whenever you mention full time to a lot of people, I've noticed working with everyone. Um, as soon as you bring up full time, a lot of people are like, oh, mm. that time. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, like, very it's this few disdainful people thing, to, right? Yeah. I really loved it. Mm. I really enjoyed my years of full time. Mm. Um, and yeah, I love just like, yeah, waking up every morning and being like, I get to dance today. Mm. And tomorrow, and the next day. You see, because I never did it, so I'm always coming from the other side of the fence, yeah. trying to unpack why people decided to do it three times. Because I'm a tough person. If I do something one time, I can sort of chalk that up to, like, done it. Yeah. Then they're done, because I'm too impatient. Yeah. I just have this weird impatience thing. Yeah, so yeah. If, I, if I spend a year of my life doing something, and then I finish it, and I don't get out of it what I thought I would, I sort of go like that. Yeah. Not that that's what happens. I mean, for a lot of people, they they get what they really what they want out of full-time which is a full-time dance education and then they jump out into the world and then they work right mm. um yeah that's kind of why i like to unpack that stuff but yeah. was there anything you felt like you weren't getting it full-time i mean that you like that you kept that kept bringing you back into the fray of full-time no it wasn't it wasn't like i got to the end of the year and said to myself oh, I'm not where I want to be. Right. I better do it again. It was, mm. I really enjoyed that. It's a good distinction. So make. let's just do it again. Sure. You know, um, I didn't like, cool. I got, when I got to the end of the year, um, you know, I didn't have the same goals. Well, I mean, sort of, I didn't have like the same goals that everybody else does at the end of their year. Like it wasn't like, okay, grad's finished. I'm going to go book a cruise ship. Mm. You know, it's like, of course, went to all the auditions, but it's like, that wasn't my goal at that time. Sure. And I still was like, I've learned a lot, but I, but there is still more that I want to learn, you know, and I didn't want to fall into that habit of sitting at home waiting for something to happen. Yep. I was like, if I'm going to, okay, so I'm not, I haven't booked any jobs now. Sweet. Let's get back into training. Let's go mm. for it. Um, and yeah, it was just, I just got addicted to that day to day. Yeah. Loving the process, loving the hurt, loving the, you know, and yeah, every day, like you see improvements and whatnot um and grad's got to be really fun as well oh right? grad's, grad's brilliant surely it's ah, oh, it's <laughs> i watch people have grads and i see how emotional they get i mean i'm sort of i did marco's showbiz yeah course and which you've done as well yeah which i did as True. well this and so like <laughs> you know that was sort of our grad in a way yeah as well so that was kind of as close as i I've gotten to that kind of a but the feeling for it was exactly closing a show is also a similar feeling I think yeah yeah you get that all of those mm. hours of work has led up to that mm-hmm. um, and it's yeah it's fantastic it's brilliant so yeah no I really enjoyed my years of full time cool um, yeah so after I finished those three years um, I had I met up with um, with Chaz Chaz Cummins um, during during my years at Village and got into the whole um, hip hop HHI cruise thing, hip hop international. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I had never done before. Mm. You know. And what was the crew called? <laughs> we were called Pretty Boy Swag. Nice. We still are. 
it's still, still cool it's still that. Yeah, still cool pretty boy that. swag Fantastic. is a thing. Love is a thing. that. It is, it is pretty happening. boy swag. That's it. No um, one's ever, no one's ever said it with that, that clear pretty boy swag. swag. Yes. That very clear. And next onto stage, the yes. swaggy pretty boy. Ladies, swag. ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, for your entertainment, pretty boy swag. <laughs> not exactly. No, uh, there's, there's usually a big dude behind a mic. He's got it. like a background in rapping. Yeah. No, we had um, but like, who has a background in backyard rapping? <laughs> <laughs> You like that? Nice, nice, nice. That's usually what it feels like. They're like, I have a rap career. And then you're like, I remember always sitting there in the audience at these HHI events going, do you? Yep. Do you? Did you? Did yeah. you ever? Really? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. In, in your car? Like, yeah, on the like, way to the shops? Yeah, like in the shower. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so yeah, gone into that. And that was the same thing. That was just like, you know, the boys in the studio just working, just yep. going for it, pushing it out. Um, and yeah, that eventually got me into uh, meeting up with the Z Boys, mm-hmm. which was life changing. Yeah, know? cool. Like meeting up, getting getting to um, train and compete with the Z Boys. And was how many people crazy. are in the Z Boys? Um, when I joined up, I was there when they were doing the Z Boys Mafia, so they make oh, a yeah. crew. There was twenty five of us. Whew. We all yeah, <clears throat> it's pretty big for hip hop crews. Everyone is massive. everyone who's listening back home. Yeah. <laughs> at least for like a grassroots one like, yeah I mean apart from the ones that have been around for a while and like almost dynasties right because you've mm. got hip hop crew dynasties that are going on right now yeah it's insane it's crazy it's such a choreographies and like yeah you know especially in the states right oh yeah massive in the states it's crazy Kinge, and Kinges choreographies <laughs> Jabberwockies are Jabberwockies still going. is still going they're still they still got their full time show in Vegas Mate. like Unreal. That and is that's like the dream, right? Well, that's it. That's it. That's just it's like one of the dreams. Why not? <laughs> that's one of the possibilities mm. that like pulls us into this. So I bad. think they might be doing auditions again. Dang. Soon. But it's it's, it's crazy States. how they do it. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> yeah. okay, auditions are this weekend in LA. Get over here, and you're like, yeah, and you're like, <coughs> make it make it happen. And you're like, I can't. I'm Australian. <laughs> you have a visa. That's it. Me and I'm broke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not only do I not have a visa. Couldn't even if I was in the states, I couldn't afford to try and get a visa. No, but even if I couldn't afford it to try and get a visa, I couldn't even afford a plane to. Like, <laughs> so many levels to it. That's it. American immigration is really hard because, yeah. like, you got to have you got to have a job already booked in order to get like an O one visa. That's it. But then you also need to have an O one visa to get booked for a job. It's catch twenty two. Mm. So you got to have a, a ticket to be in the club, but you got to be in the club to get a ticket. That's it. And Unless you're someone as lucky as um, Holly Hedrick. She yeah, won like won the lottery or something. No, she won like the visa yeah, lottery. yeah. No, she won the green. Was it the green card lottery? Green that card. She won? Yeah, yeah. that's the one. Yeah. Yep. And and that's pretty much. She our... took it. Haven't seen her since. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Fantastic. Good on her. Yeah, she was my teacher at Urban as well. Yep. Yeah. So Definitely. Um, yeah, that makes sense in my yeah. timeline in my head. Yeah. Yeah. So back that was. 2014 when I was yeah, in wow. Urban and, and she was one of the first people um, who I got to learn from that would fuse uh, like popping and hip hop styles with contemporary yeah cool and that sort of thing and I just completely fell in love with it yeah Holly and I go way back with um, La Credo Dance mm, Company yes as well so she was she was assistant I think for a while there she was assistant choreographer I mm-hmm. think I did about three shows with them maybe four I'm not sure. It was a while ago. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just uh, she was she's great to work with, right? Yeah. She's just so gung ho and so headstrong, and yeah. yeah, she just really knows what she wants out of you, and yeah, she'll drive for it, and that's really that's it. That's really inspiring. And one of the things that she would do, like you know, um, you know, she went around to each of us and um, would see like a little something that we're sort of holding back on, and say. No, in this part, yeah. you're going to... That little thing that you want to do, go for it. Yep. And, yeah, it was fantastic, you know. Um, but, yeah, so, um, yeah, did Z-Boys. So, we went over to Vegas. We got to the semifinals for HHI, which was crazy. Um, Dang. The crowd over there is unbelievable. Like, I have never heard such a big noise um, from humans. Yes, yeah. crazy. <laughs> um <laughs> Um, and yeah, we came back and then, yeah, the, um, the mafia sort of broke up after a little bit. 
Um, but the boys invited me to come back into their smaller six-man crew for Z Boys. Yep. And um, and yeah, we were like, nah, let's we're going to do HHI again the next year round, and we're going to go for it. Um, and everything was going great. We had a really good crew. We had a really good hard set. Um, and then um, yeah, one of the boys got offered a contract uh, with Sony Music. And oh wow! So massive, unbelievable opportunity. It's like, crazy. Uh, the only catch was he had to fly to New Zealand that week. <laughs> right, right. To go get it. So we were like, that's right. I, I do remember this yeah. happening. I think. Yeah. I think was were we in the same like circles at the time? I think we had. This we, went we down. Met, we met around then. Yeah. Yeah. That was when because that was about when um. Uh, the passion may yet be faithful was happening. Was it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sure. And so I think that was when um. Yeah, we'll go into that, but like, I had basically seen the show and was just like, I need to talk. I need to talk to Brady. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> where's Brady? And I was like, Georgia, in- introduce me to Brady. Right Which now. was <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and I remember that happening too. I, I think I like, I think I like saw you say that to her as well. Yeah. Just because I was like scanning the room or whatever, just on a show, you kind of like make yourself open to everyone in the room. Yeah. And I do remember you like talking to Georgia and being like, like saying something, and then the next thing you know, Georgia like. I'm pretty sure she like grabbed your hand and was like, come this way. And like yeah. just dragged you straight to me. <laughs> and then you were like, hi, I'm David. Really liked your show. Yeah. And I was like, thanks, man. <laughs> I was so like, I, I just, don't know what to say. I straight away, I was like, <laughs> he just told Georgia to be like, yo, introduce me to Brady. <laughs> yeah. Which is definitely the way to do it. That's it, yeah. Wing, wing people aren't just for like, number one, aren't just for wing, having wing men. Yeah. But also <laughs> like, yeah, introduce me to that person that I have no like way of well, going like, hey well, yeah as opposed to me just walking up by myself and just being like hey that was cool yeah which would have been fine as well yeah <laughs> but you don't think that at the time no You're no they're going not. oh it'd be so weird if i look like i'm on my own yes but like well, yeah oh like, well i came there with my mum i could have like there you go. <laughs> um yeah no but yeah once you get I'm... to my age dave it's just you don't you don't care about being alone yes anymore. You just walk up to people and you're like hi i want to talk hi. to you and they go no i don't want to talk to you and you go okay Cool, that's fine. Yeah. It's absolutely nothing wrong. <laughs> you know, and if people want to judge you for being alone and, and using your legs to walk and then using your mouth to talk to them, it's like, you're a loser. <laughs> if you judge that, it's weird. But yeah. So don't be afraid to approach people, mm. no matter who it is, whether that's you're it. searching for romance or a job. <laughs> you never know where it could lead. Just Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Romance could lead to a job. Job could lead to romance. I never know. Stay tuned to find out. Yeah. <laughs> this might happen. Oh, goodness. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, B. I'm stealing him. Sorry, Z-Boys. And, like, Z one Boy. of the crew members getting a record deal and, like, all that stuff. Yes, and so, absolutely, yeah, massive. So, yeah, Eddie Tuffer, look up his music. He's crazy. Um, what? Um, but, yeah, after that, I sort of slowed down a bit as we all do sort of hit the wall and was sort of just like it starts to happen mm, you know that that massive like that massive thing that i was like so keen and happy to, and you know i sort of put not all my eggs into one basket but it was sort of like i had emotionally put myself into that i was i was ready i was keen for that and it sort of just disappeared yeah, sure. So I was very just like, damn, now what? And, you know, slow down, put the brakes on it, and just sort of find myself. I became very good at video games in that time. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And well, we all, not oh, no, but it's still, no, but it's like, a level part of it is oh, no. Yeah, it's a, like, ah, oh, damn. <sighs> um, and then, yeah, just, you know, slowly trying to, like, trying to get back into it. I mm. did have like a good few months of just doing nothing. Um, uh, yeah, I got a job which didn't involve dancing. Um, I was a basketball guy. Yeah. Step right up, win a teddy bear. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Um, Where was this at? Luna? This is at Luna Park. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, funnily enough, I've now finally become a dancer at Luna Park. Yay. Yeah. So, persistence, audition five times in a row, you might get it. You might get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many times did you go for um, Westside as well? Like, you've been oh, pushing yeah. for that for years as um, well. So. 
Well, yeah, you'd think that. I mean, well, actually, only only really once before, and mm-hmm. then I did a I did a mock audition with Mitch Woodcock mm-hmm. in Showbiz with Marco. Um. Yeah, and uh, oh, and and Nigel Nigel Turner Carroll Carroll, ah, excuse mm-hmm. me. Um. Yeah, and so I, I when I did my, the first audition of it, I remember Mitch was in the room, like auditioning on the same level as me, mm. and uh, Mitch, who got that job, and then went on to do it a whole bunch of times in a whole bunch of locations that I don't even really know all the details of, so I wouldn't really be able to to represent accurately. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he he sort of he killed that audition so so bad slash like well <laughs> amazing. Um, yeah, and I remember, I remember going, oh man, this guy's really good. And he, he got that and did all the things he did and I didn't get it. And that was when I was, that was when I was about 18, 19 ish. Mm. And just because of the rhythm of life and the, like where you, where, when you're overseas and when you're, when you're on home shores and all that stuff, I, the next time I auditioned for West Side Story was in 2018, which is 10 years for anyone counting at home, 10 years after the first West Side Story audition. And here's a musical that I thought I was like custom built for. Mm. I was like, I'm a little guy. Yep. I'm technical. I can jazz. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I, just, I look like a, I look like a dude. I mean, the yeah. sounds ridiculous, but like I'm white. I'm per- like, I can clean shaven. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, you know, custom made to be a jet. Yeah. Like, I just felt like I was. Yeah. Um, and yeah, didn't get that. And then I, I did this one recently and I got booked and I'm a shark. <laughs> so Which is so just, what? Which, okay, <laughs> like I'll take it. I will absolutely take it. Like no problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, you just don't know when, you just don't know when, when, you, when you've been shuffled into the right mob, mm. like into the right, the right zone of when you're auditioning and stuff. And that's the type of stuff people always talk about when they go, it's just not my time. Yeah, just gotta respect the journey. Like everyone, people do that thing. Yeah, um, which I'm not. I don't really go in for that stuff. I just go. I try my best to just go. Oh well, and you know, it just didn't happen, and it might happen in the future, and it might not, and I just have to be have to be okay with all those options. Yes, but like, cause then, yeah, and I did go in with heaps of mojo after doing that mock audition, uh, in showbiz as well. Mm. So there was like this heaps of just momentum behind me. I was like, I've got this. Yeah, I know the Cory. Yeah. No, it is. I know what West Side is. I know everything about. I, I, not everything about it. I was like, I know heaps, heaps about it now. Yeah. Like way more than I knew back then. And back then, I kind of got pretty close. Mm. So I'm like, imagine what I'm going to do now. And then, sure enough. Yep. That's it. Boom. Got yeah. it. Did a whole bunch of vocal work leading up to the audition as well. Yeah. Like heaps. Yeah. Smash myself vocally. <laughs> um, just to try and get my because I got like punk rock voice. Trying to fix that up and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, lots of working with senior teachers on that one. And so w- you, when everything sort of slowed down, was that because you sort of, you had all your eggs in one basket, right? As mm. you mentioned. Yeah. So like it, you kind of, what allowed you to slow down more than anything was the fact that, was not only the fact that this thing didn't go through, mm. but also that you would put all your eggs in one basket and you hadn't diversified your, your skill set or your attention yeah, and so when that one thing failed, you had then nothing to nothing to shift your focus too quickly. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sort of building um, this theory with with the blackguard and with all the things I do because I also have a day job. Bonds of bike tours. If you want a bike tour of Sydney, like, <laughs> yes, I take people on cycling guide on cycling tours. Um, and so, like, that's a good thing to do when nothing in the dance world is happening. I yeah. just go, oh well, I'll just bury my head in, you know. But doing bonsai and that way money's still coming in yeah if nothing's happening with bonsai i can go oh well i'll bury my head in doing admin work for either myself or the blackguard or mm. product development <clears throat> personal development you know all those things uh yeah if acting work's not happening it's it's dance work That's if it, dance yeah. work's not happening it would you know if acting works work is happening i usually drop everything this is a weird like hierarchy to yeah it, you know what i mean it's like goes acting jobs mm-hmm. drop everything because they're rare. Yeah. Do it. Um, I need one. And then, <laughs> Still waiting for one. And then, and then like, bike tours, just make sure you're always doing them. 
Like, I yeah. just can't stop doing them. Because that's, need... that's just income. Yeah, I just and need to keep going. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I haven't done a tour in a, in a little while, so I just have to keep making sure I'm picking up shifts. Yeah, um, yeah and then and, and teaching work as well. Teaching mm. work is sort of like, I don't do much teaching these days. And we had a bit mm. of a chat about teaching before we before we started filming. Yeah. Mm. And, like, and all the things about KPIs, key performance indicators while you're teaching and... It's funny because it links into the chat we had right at the start when we were talking about um, remembering kids' names. Yes. <laughs> and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I think the key is like having something to not fall back on. Because everyone says that. Everyone's like, you've got to make sure you have something to fall back on. That feels like it's a weird excuse. Feel, yeah, I don't like the like way s- that's framed. Yeah. Never like that. But whenever I hear that, I'm always just like, do you not think it's going to happen? Yeah. You know, like it's like a... And that's the problem. People are like, oh yeah, you should have like a backup job. I'm like, in case I fail. Yeah. And... I don't think, but and here's no. the thing: I, I've heard that so many times. Uh, I disagree. I don't think you need a backup job. No, I think you need a, a side job. I think you need side mm. jobs, side hustles, side yeah. things to keep you training. Yeah, like it's basically the way they teach you to, or the way people are instructed to do well by investing their money. Mm. It's like diversifying their assets mm-hmm. and not just going. I'm gonna put all of my money. On in gold stocks. I don't even know if that's how it works, but you know what I mean. Like I'm not. I'm just. Gonna, I'm just gonna put all my money in, like yeah. in, so, you know, in, in just the thing. one thing. In that thing. Yeah. And when you do that, you're just setting yourself up for a world of hurt. Because yeah. when it goes well, it goes well. And when it, but when it doesn't, you got you're stuck. You got Buckleys, right? Yeah. And you find yourself two months later being like, I haven't danced. You're being like, I'm so good at video games now. Yeah. But my flares but suck. Nobody's going to pay me for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I well, don't... They well, might if you're good enough. These days, with oh, esports and stuff. That's it, yeah. I suppose. If I, if I started playing Fortnite, maybe, but... I yeah, not sure. Do that. <laughs> Actually, Neil has said, Neil's like, if dance didn't work out, he would totally try and be an esports guy. Do you see... um? Uh, Which makes perfect sense yeah. for him. Do you see Jack Black has got his new gaming channel? No. It's amazing. Is He's, it really? He got to like 10 million views in his second video. You're kidding. Like, of course. And that makes just, perfect sense for Jack Black. Well done, Jack Black. Fantastic. I love that man so much. Um, he had this um, he had this great thing going for a while where he was mimicking. He was like, not vocally, I guess, but like mimicking with his mouth the the shapes of um, like guitar solos in famous uh-huh. rock songs. <laughs> so he was just like doing his own version and being like, like with his face because he's got that like super malleable. Super malleable face. It's great. Mm. It's the best thing. <laughs> and once I found, I was like, "You are the bomb." It's just so good. It's so funny. Oh. Mm. Yeah. So I think diversifying. Yeah. So that you don't fall and into that's, so that's that people I've, don't fall into that trap. Yeah. And that's one of the things I really learned um, in 2018. This last year, especially. Yeah. Because yeah, like so yeah after, um, yeah after I had my you know time of nothingness, I was like no. Nah. This is ridiculous. Get me back into it. I'm ready to go. Mm. <coughs> sorry. And, um, um, Just as I turn the mic up too. Yeah, Thanks. sorry. Yeah, you're right. Like, <laughs> good time, good time. Um, and yeah, so yeah, so I went to watch the first Black Guard show. And um, you know, me and Georgia go way back. She was, she was in um, our sister crew when I was with Pretty Boy Swag. No way, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's like huh. how we met. So, so yeah, so Chaz set up like the Pretty Boy Swag crew and then, um, you know, the girls were doing Alua. Mm-hmm. We're called. And so... What yeah, were they we called, sorry? Alua. Alua. Yes. What does what does that mean? Is that like a, na- is that like a native a th- word or name? Th- or I some- think it is native to somewhere. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know much about it. I was... Yeah. Sounds like... Holly. I think it might be, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because well, Chaz is from New Zealand. Yes. Yeah. But I'm not sure why. Something probably about it. it. I don't Sounds know. to me. Anyway. Yeah. To my I'm not like, sure why. Delicate Anglo Australian is. Yeah. <laughs> Far out. Yeah. I, don't, I need to research more. Alua. Mm. Alua, yes. Um, so, yeah, so we, we were both competing side by side. Yeah, cool. And, you know, training and everything. So, yeah, it was a great, great time. Um, and so, yeah, so I went to the Blackguard. Pretty much because she was in it. Yeah, get into this part of the story. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the good stuff. This is a good bit. I love this bit. That's it. When you told me this story, you have to tell it the same way you told me that, that other time. That other time? 
when you came over Sorry. with with the the blackguard group and feeding you dinner. You came over. You were here first. I was here first. Yes. Yeah, and you were you were telling me about when you were doing. Um, oh no! Well, Sella. I've heard like two versions of the story. This is great, actually, because I had Sella on, and yes, she talk was about talking about you. How she told she was like David Green, get on there right now. Yeah, I don't know why she had such a British accent. Why I've given her such a British accent? Because <laughs> I don't think you can help it, mate. Yeah, sorry. I think that's where where we're at. She didn't say it like that. Sorry, so so give give everyone <laughs> the context of this story because. Yeah, they just have to know. So it was, yeah, you do it, you do it, because you know the story, right? I do it, okay. Um, so, okay, so yeah, um, so I went to, I went to the show to go, you know, go watch, go watch Georgia, and I was sitting there in the audience um, uh, next to my mum, and, you know, we're chatting away, and then I realised the background, you know, like the, what do you call it, like the intro music, the, yeah, it's like the it, music that plays while everyone sits down. Yeah. Yeah, whatever that's called. Entr- entrance music, whatever. Yeah, interlude, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, um, I was like sitting there, I was talking to mum and I was, I stopped like mid-conversation and I was like, I know this guy. This is sick. Yeah. Oh man, I want, oh, I'm keen for this now. And like, you know, I sat up in my chair and I was like, oh, when's it going to start? Like, yeah, 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 it was great. Cool. And then, and yeah, and I got to watch, um, um, yeah, got to watch Pasha May yet be fatal, and it was... Which is the shirt he's wearing right now. Oh. We'll talk about that later. But go it's on. It's almost like he did it on purpose. Um, almost. <laughs> almost. Um, no, you just you just own 20 of that sh- that same shirt. Yeah. That's just how it worked. That's it. He loves the black guy that much that he bought all of our versions of that shirt. There's actually none left because of David. Sorry. You don't get one. Yeah. See, he's the gold standard mm. of a fan. So if you're a fan... Pick your game up. <laughs> <laughs> what? You heard it here first. <laughs> That's it. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but yeah. It, did it just click? No. It may have. It may have. Okay. It um, may well have. Keep talking. <laughs> just in case. Uh, but yeah, no. So I got to watch the show and was just sitting there like absolutely in love with all the music, all like the passion um of it all because yeah like back in high school um i tried mixing my hip-hop dancing with metallica Mm. that was my hsc thing that was the thing that all my teachers said no don't do that you need to do some contemporary or something and i was like i'll chuck a contemporary move in there sure Mm. um and ended up doing really well didn't do very well in any of my other subjects but that's okay (laughs) (laughs) Um, and then yeah at the end of the show I was like I went up to George and I was like that was crazy that was brilliant get me like get me to talk with Brady right now right um, and yeah no it was it was fantastic um, yeah um, oh, it feels You're like s- such a long time ago now it was mate it, it was, was. It, I don't know it actually was yeah it wasn't um. Yeah, and then where'd we go from there? And then you were doing you were doing seller's development, right? Yes. Yes. So so we, you thought that was good. You met me. We had a chat, and yeah. you were like, "Really love the show, man! Like that was great. There's something I wanted. I feel like you even expressed something then. Like you said that you wanted to be a, a part of it, or you like you know yeah. something about it, something about what you what I just watched like I really related to or you know yeah. really connected with it was sort of like I remember like tapping my mum on the shoulder and just being same thing as what you said before it's like feeling tailor made for something I was like right this is exactly what I've been wanting to do sure and I was like I didn't even properly realise that I wanted to do it but now that I've seen it this is it yeah you know going from nothing for a few months to then being like oh my god I completely forgot yeah. that not forgot, but how did I not see this? Ah, sure. Fantastic. Need it. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, went and did Seller's um, uh, development workshop with One Dance Collective, which is fantastic as well. Get hi, to- Lucy. Hi, Rob. Hello. Get into those. They're great. Every single one of them has taught me something completely different and completely eye-opening mm-hmm. you know um we've talked about one dance collective in every single podcast episode so far <laughs> yeah 
one day, one of these days, I'll get Rob or Lucy in to tell you about it, to tell the podcast listeners about it. That'd be good. Because they keep hearing, they're like, I keep hearing about this thing. What is it? They just what have no it? idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you could just, you could just Google. <laughs> That's it. Research. Mm. Research. Yeah, do research. you research? Do you research? That's what everybody needs. Um, exactly. That's what I really need. Mm. I, I do not research enough. Go on, um, come on, Dave. Get us there. Get us there. Get us there. Come on. Um, so yeah, so yeah. Now, did the um, yeah. So during the during the development with Seller, we were sitting down in the circle and going around and being like, okay, so what's some goals that you want? And um, you know, um, one of the exercises she was doing was uh, you need to write down on paper for everybody to see what you're doing in five years from now. Hmm. And Andy wrote down um, very emotionally wrote down performing with Janet Jackson and it was just like yes that is going to be that's going to happen you know? yeah right like that's okay here's a you know just make a massive goal for yourself something that scares the crap out of you but you need it sure um, and I was as Seller said in the last interview yeah I was pretty confused I really didn't have much of an idea of what I wanted or saw myself I, I think I mm. said something along the lines of I want to be choreographed in my own show and going on tour. Hmm? Don't know why. Yeah. You know, I was just like, oh, yeah, in five years, yeah, that would be cool. Don't know what I'm going to say about it or what I'm going to do with it. And then, yeah, Celis sort of was just like, okay, well, what, what interests do you have? What, what do you like doing? And I was like, well, I love my hip hop. I love my breaking. Um, you know, I, I love my music. She's like, what, what kind of music? So I'm like, oh yeah, rock, punk, like, you know, Metallica, all that stuff. And then, yeah, and exactly as she described it, she put the book down and was like, have you, David, you David know, Green. David Green. <laughs> yeah. Have you, have you, do you know about the Black Garden? And I was like, oh. Um, hey, do you know about this thing that's custom built for you and you didn't even, yeah. Yeah, didn't even click. It's like, oh, uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Like, of course. Oh. Uh, and yeah, that was just a massive, just like, yes, that's that's where I should be aiming myself. Right. You know, instead of, oh, confusion, like, what and could then, I possibly do? And then yeah, we, just, held an, <laughs> we held an audition and you were there. I was there. I was, and you got the freaking job. Yes. Yep. Thank you for that. <laughs> there you are. No worries. But even like. Thank you for coming to the audition. That's kind of how it has to, that's how it has to work. Mm, that's. Yeah, one of the only auditions that I've actually ever passed. Oh, yeah, that was the first. That was the first audition I passed, apart from like getting into full time in that. Right, but like, yeah, as, in terms of like jobs and work, mm. like, every other audition has been a failure. Yeah. Not well, Seller and I were talking about auditions <clears throat> on the last episode. Which, by the way, if you're listening to this one and you haven't listened to episode number two, go back listen to episode number two. Seller Vi is amazing and mm-hmm. we talk about a lot of great stuff in that one so go back yep um but yeah she was talking about how like auditioning she it's not that she was wasn't good at it but she would just find herself not being not getting picked and we had this whole conversation about like mm. picking yourself yes um and i don't know if you listened to it did you listen mm-hmm. to it mm-hmm. oh yeah so we had this whole convo about picking yourself um which is what I've done with the blackguard. Yeah. And it's sort of what we all have to do as teachers and as choreographers. We have to go, yeah, hi, I can teach your students. Yeah. At the dance studio you have, right? Yeah. All that came about from you watching Passion May Yet Be Fatal. Yeah. And then... And then forgetting that you had seen Passion May Yet Be Fatal <laughs> for some weird reason. Uh, I mean, yeah, and just forgetting that, hang on, that's a thing that I could actually be doing. You know, like that's not. There wasn't just. It's a weird. Show. That, it's it weird that like, somehow you had developed a blind spot. Yeah. For that, even though the because I remember spot was you like right in front of me. I distinctly sure. I, just, <laughs> I distinctly remember you coming up to me and being like, "Oh yeah, I want to totally like, I want to be involved in this." Like mm. you said something. You even said something then, uh, and yeah. I was thinking at the time because I th- I think I had seen you do things and I think I'd seen you in like the like Pretty Boy Swag or Sea Boys Mafia or something. Yeah. I'd something seen you around the traps somehow. Yeah. Yeah, like at, maybe even at a class. It's like, mm. oh, that guy's good. Um, something like way in the back of my head, right? Yeah. And then you said that to me and I was like, oh, cool. And I just, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't realize that a conversation like the one you had had with Sella would yeah, even do, like would, would exist, but here we are. 
Yeah. So that had to happen. You do need to do more research, mate. I do. <laughs> I do. No, there's yeah, so much. But I do too. <laughs> we all we all do. Like I'm always the the mm. search for knowledge is never ending. Yeah. Of course. Never, ever, ever. Trust Which is oh, one no. of the reasons why why I'm reading thirteen books at once. Yeah. Um, or why I did three years of full time. Yeah. You know. Sure. You always go back into training. Always go back into doing that. Um, exactly. But yeah. So after that realization, second realization whatever you want to call it, that just sparked me to really push. So, yeah, when, you know, headfirst into training myself, I was getting back into as many open classes as I could. Um, you know, I met up with Pretty Boy again, and not because my goal was I had to get gold place for HHI, but it was just like, I know that I'll get good training. Yeah. Like, it'll keep, it'll keep me fit. It'll force me to work. And... And then, yeah, before I knew it, um, start of 2018, I was doing a Michael Jackson Legacy Tour mm -hmm. with William Hall while rehearses, rehearsing for The Black Guard. Still breathing. Still breathing. While um, Marco's showbiz thing. Yeah, that was crazy. That was a crazy three months. <laughs> Man, when it rains, it pours. Yeah. And that's just sort of like the culmination of all your hard work right just coming together that's it yeah yeah it was that'll just, keep happening yeah and that ah oh, i absolutely loved it like um mm. you know i it was so it's of course so stressful trying to be like okay i need to be here on this day i need to be here on this day i think we you know it was like my, scheduling sucks scheduling is a not Pain. a nice thing yep yes it is yep bad and i'm very bad at it um but <laughs> you yeah. should teach classes at it at full time. How to schedule yourself? Seriously, hey, yes. full time studio owners, if you're listening, mm. like for real, get someone in who's a absolute an absolute gun at scheduling. Yeah, and just I'm no longer talking to the camera because the camera's dead. Um, oh, we run out of <laughs> we run out of space on the SD card. That's fine. That's my mistake. I, <laughs> I make at least one mistake per podcast, so it's fine. I make at I'm least one mistake per step I'm, I take. So I'm okay. learning. We're all studying. But yeah, studio uh, full time studio owners get someone in to teach people how to how to like schedule themselves. Yep. Um, how to how to like communicate between people who are trying to book you for different jobs that clash like cl date clashing like things like that mm. teach people how to figure that out because yeah. i think sometimes i still have to i sometimes have to teach people how to do that i'm like oh well you just do this and do that and they're like that's really like that confusing and really like nerve-wracking yeah. or whatever and i'm like yep correct but you have to but you got to do it that's yeah that's yeah. the job because it will happen you know that's pretty yeah. much where we earn our money though mm. just going yeah. Okay, I've got that on that day. I've got that on that day. Can we fit this in here? If we can't, then we can do you know, That's it. doing and all those the, schedule acrobatics. <clears throat> you know, like like the videos. Like we're still trying to find. Oh, yeah, we're still trying to find a day. Get together. Yeah. What um, video? Ooh, we were. Ooh, ooh, stay tuned. Yeah. It's all happening. This is the test to see if people. But live Dave, there. you're wearing you're wearing one of the, you're wearing one of like the OG shirts now. I am. Yes. You, you gave this to me at ADS. There's none of those available. Actually, I found actually I found one of those <laughs> shirts. So hold on to it. Mm -hmm. I found one of those shirts at a Vinnie's in Cronulla. Yeah, someone had already like someone had already like chucked it into Vinnie's. What? At Cronulla, yeah. Dead set. It was the best. I took a photo of it, sent it to Fly Crew. <laughs> I was like, "Who's is this?" Because <laughs> a lot of them live in freaking Cronulla. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so for anyone listening to the podcast, because again, camera's dead, that's fine. Um, if you would like some Blackguard merch, you'll find some on the Blackguard Instagram if you dig deep enough. But we've still got a whole bunch of the black um, Blackguard shirts with the, the dictionary definition of what a Blackguard is on the front. I'm mm -hmm. showing Dave so that he knows what I'm talking about. That's it. It's got the Blackguard logo on the back. And we've also st we've still got we've only got a limited number of these left. But the white <laughs> still breathing mm. shirts. Which you should get. We did one run of these. Right now, they're super limited edition. I've got less than ten. Ooh. I've got less than ten. And I'm the one I'm holding in my hands right now, I'm actually holding on to for my niece when she grows up. <laughs> like yeah, because my my niece and nephew they're getting like special 
Blackguard oh, merch yes. packages that are like from from every year of the Blackguard. Yeah, isn't that cute? I know, right? Aww. So thoughtful. Um, Beautiful. So yeah, but if you if you want a Blackguard shirt, if you want some gear, it's it's always going to be running out. So message me, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, whatever you got to do. Um, or the Blackguard find a way. Yeah. Um, or you can either email me at Brady underscore Kitchingham at hotmail dot com, or you can email the Blackguard at the Blackguard Co at gmail.com so there's those two also I have a blog just want to like take a second to spruik I've got a blog on medium just search my name on the app medium which is a blogging app you will find the blog it's got things like how I came up with the idea for the blackguard you know how I created um, still breathing the show how I came up with the concepts for it all that stuff we mentioned earlier that we've got fright night coming up which is the Halloween festival and That's happening this year again as well I've got a I've got like a little a gap in between West Side Story where I will oh, be right. able to be at it as well so oh, wow. yeah I'm not just like running this one from afar <laughs> um, yeah and follow us on the social media on Instagram we've got the blackguard underscore uh, my personal one is is Brady Kitch B-R-A-D-Y-K-I-T-C-H David Green's Instagram is uh, David J underscore green there you go yeah And you've got the black out on Facebook and you've also got uh, Brady Kitchingham on Facebook you've got a Facebook page there final bit of the day because we just have to <laughs> we have to wrap this bad boy oh, yes. up My bad. <laughs> no no bad at all no bad at all sir uh, I have a questionnaire for you oh yes okay yeah I, you know this questionnaire this is the p- this pivot the this is my variation of the pivot questionnaire <laughs> so question one what is your favorite word David Green my favorite word yes oh um ah Um, whenever you're ready I don't know um, <laughs> oh this um, what's something what's, oh I don't know how to spell it what's your, what's your least favourite word do you know that one ish get it oh god so I'll say ish get it is that like let's get it I think so yeah let's, let's, let's get it but terrible very but terrible, terrible drunken yeah party that's awful um, that's, yeah yeah And that's just replaying in the back of my and mind. And so what, oh God. <laughs> and so what's your favorite word? Did you um, remember it yet? Just pick any word. Any word, come okay. On. No, not any word, but like, <laughs> come on, like, give it something. Uh, It doesn't have to be perfect. Just, just. This isn't going on record forever. It totally is. <laughs> <laughs> This is my new CV. Yeah, yeah. Um, determined. Determined. Um, yeah. Cool. Dig it. It's okay. mad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Ooh. Um. Just having like a really like good heartfelt um, passionate force behind what you're doing mm. um, I cool. can't I'm, I'm so sick of just dancing and performing because look at look at the trick I can do yeah it's especially since with being with like the blackguard and all of the things I've been doing with Rob and Lucy and just all that it's like God, it feels so much better to actually do it because you get so emotionally built up that that is how you need to expand and explode yourself mm. you know not to the point where you knee yourself in the forehead no <laughs> which which you did which I did yep yep and give yourself a concussion or you know you don't have to be bleeding on the floor but it's like um, that's what really does it for me when it's just like You, when you you finish your movement it's like it might only be like four or eight counts but then you're left there and you're like <sighs> that is everything is on the floor right now see everything is for the audience what turns you off twerking <laughs> fair enough <laughs> it's just like why? what what frustrates you and it's probably people who agree um <laughs> what frustrates you and what do you do to move past your frustration um Well, apart from traffic like sure yeah trap just it can be traffic traffic uh, people like just getting caught up in things that really don't matter drama mm. you know all dramas good one yeah, yeah just why are you wasting your effort mm. and what is the point like you know as we were saying like you know um, when you get when you get to the point where you learn that people don't need like oh hi I would like to talk to you and I wouldn't like to okay yeah so you don't then need to turn around and start you talk and smack about them for the next three hours with everyone else you work with mm. about how that person didn't want to talk to you yeah yeah 
and like then, taking things personally and then yeah yeah sure or just causing drama because what your the job that you're doing at the moment isn't exciting enough to be on its own like right just yeah stop it <laughs> sure what uh, what sound or noise do you love um <laughs> was it that <laughs> um, that that was a really cool bike I want to find that bike <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, I miss the yawn that my cat used to make. Oh, yeah. that's really cute. Really, really, really. I miss oh. my cats. <laughs> Dave, I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for that one. I'm sorry. Um, what sound or noise do you hate? Uh, um, the sound of kids doing the floss. <laughs> Which sounds like just air. It's like, ish kitty. Oh, wow. Well, even with that noise, that's, even the, that's the, the worst. I'm sure they will. Um, <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Oh, um, I've always sort of, I've liked writing and, you know, used to, I wrote a couple of like little sort of plays during full time and whatnot. So always loved doing that. Would, would Yeah. If I couldn't dance or if that all stopped for whatever reason, I'd probably pursue that. Mm. Yeah. Writing stories and whatnot. That'd be cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what profession would you not like to do? Um, something that involved like, sitting behind a desk. Mm-hmm. I, need to, I need to be physical. I need to be on my feet jumping around. Like, that's why Luna Park is so great. Because like, even when I was doing just... You know, even when it was just like a really slow day playing the basketball game or whatnot, I'm still running around, jumping around, being crazy. Like, that's what I love. I run off adrenaline more than anything else. So I need that in my life. Sure. Um, when you die, what do you hope people will say about you after you're gone? Mm. This one's the toughest This one. is the tough one. I was, I was listening to you, our sister Cello, and was like, Oh, you should have seen her face. I haven't oh. uploaded the, the footage yet, but you should have seen her face. Oh, yeah, I could I could hear it. And I was like, oh. I was like, when you die, she, like, she was like, she was like, like her face just <laughs> just snapped in half, and went, like from the mouth. She went, oh. <laughs> um, um, God, um, I just had a funny thought for like at a funeral, like someone just standing above your coffin or whatever and just going a beautiful David <laughs> <laughs> that'd be that'd be nice that'd uh, be. yeah but um no so my uh, what that reminds me of um my so my granddad passed away um just before we were doing the blackguard um which that's is right. one of the things that that's right. I used during the blackguard mm. um which you know um I'm gonna go into a little bit of a story but like you know this this life that we live, we don't always get time to do what we need to do. Um, you know, for whatever reason, like, so, you know, I went over to England with a family, had the funeral, um, and before I knew it, I had to come home. I had to leave the family. They was, were over there spending time together, and I had to come back and work or do a video or something like that, which is great. I'm glad I got to do it, but I was like, I need time. And the blackguard was there at that perfect time to allow me to get out what I needed yep you know um and I remember at the funeral um my dad got up to do the to do the eulogy and he stood up there and he tried to hold it together and the only word he could say was gentleman it was like hmm. my my um, Ron was a gentleman in every sense of the word, and I guess he couldn't say more than that. Hmm. That was it. And I guess that was that's sort of like yeah. If you could have like a goal, that would be mine. I guess something like that there, just to be like yeah. That's it. There's, there's no more to say. No. I, I think. <laughs> I think. 
mate, go the way you're going. And <laughs> I think, yeah. I think one of the greatest things about you is that I think that word very adequately describes you. <laughs> very adequately. You, yeah. And I think I think there's so many people that would agree. But we're going to leave it there. <laughs> so, yeah. hey man, thanks for this. Oh, thanks thank, for coming thank in. You. Thanks for having me. Thank you for. It's going to be a pleasure. Yes. It's, uh, yeah. it's going, to, going to keep getting more people in. It's going to be all fun. Sounds good. Um, folks, if you're, if you're listening, thanks for listening to the episode. Um, subscribe, like, do all the things that you have to do. <laughs> and uh, listen, to, listen to the other episodes. Make sure you're going back and mm. you're checking out the other, the other ones as well as we continue the journey forward. Thanks, Dave. Thank you.